Hey guys! Welcome back to The Traveling Swiss. If you are new here, my name is Alexis and I am American. And my name is Louis and I am Swiss. And together we make videos from both of our point of view all about traveling and living in Switzerland. So if that sounds interesting to you, click that subscribe button and make sure to stick around. In this video, we're gonna go to the region that so many of you love to visit in Switzerland and that is the Interlaken For region. For good reason, I think. We have videos all over this region, but today we're gonna give you our top 10 tourist mistakes to avoid. There are a lot of amazing things to do and see in the Interlaken region and a lot of them come at a really high price tag. So these tips will range from ways that you can make sure you're not just wasting money and making sure you're not wasting time too. Yeah. So we're gonna go through the top 10 based on our experience and based on what we've heard from all of you guys. Starting with that, we're gonna go right into number one. So for the number one is not planning accordingly with the travel passes that are available for the region. In the Interlaken region, I really recommend using some of the travel passes that are created. There are three travel passes. We've made a video about it actually to help you decide. Depending on your itinerary, you'll have a pass that will fit better than the other. Really not planning on this will make you lose money and so this is something to get really that pass uh, to if you want to maximize your time that you spend in gondolas, mountain trains. This is a beautiful part of the region and so planning with these pass is good. The biggest mistake that we see a lot of you guys making is buying the Swiss travel pass. Yeah. Particularly if you'd like to visit the Jungfraujoch, you cannot get there with the Swiss travel pass. Okay, so number two is not checking the weather forecast and particularly the webcams in advance. So after tip number one, you know which travel pass is gonna make the most sense for your trip. And let's say you're going to the Jungfrau, you're you're really excited, the weather looks amazing in the Valley of Interlaken, and you take that train up and you're hit with a wall of fog. So you cannot trust the weather in the valleys to determine what the weather looks like up on the top of the mountains. Great news there is all of these different mountains in the region have webcams. So the Fierce, the Jungfraujoch, all those different mountains have a webcam at the top. Make sure to check them. A lot of those travel passes you buy are valid for three days, which is great because you can juggle your itinerary around a little bit. So I'll put the links in the description they're really, really important because it's such a shame if you have that day planned and you go up and you are met with a cloud. Yeah, and I think you have different peaks and different places that will have different, very different actually um, weather because you have mountains in between and clouds might be stuck in one valley and not the other. So. I think being adaptive and not being stuck to one thing in one day uh, will be good and also these travel passes allow you to do so. So really try to uh, keep it open, uh, having your ideas in mind, but keep it open based on the weather. Another mistake to avoid when you are in Interlaken, Interlaken means between two lakes and it's to disregard the lake activities. We have two beautiful lakes, the Lake Brienz Lake Luz and the Lake Thun and this is really a nice day that you can plan on a boat. You have some old boats, uh, especially on the, on the summer. It's beautiful when you have sun, the color is amazing on the Lake Brienz. So disregarding the boat tours and the, enjoying the, the lakes is something to avoid. I would really recommend it. Also diversifying from the mountains, a, a day on the lakes is nice. Make sure to at least think about these possibilities and having these boat tours you have with the Berner Oberland Pass, for example, all the boats that are included. And also if you have Swiss Travel Pass, actually this is also included. So this can be a nice activity. The boat to go on the Lake Brienz is my favorite. You can go to Iselwald, that is a very cute little village, and Brienz is also a nice uh, little city. So that's something to think about also when you plan your trip to Interlaken. Okay, so moving into the tourist mistake number four to avoid, and that is confusing Interlaken Best and Interlaken Post. So Interlaken has two train stations, east and west. The main one is Interlaken Ost, that is the main train station. That is the one that's more central to everything, the village, the hotels, things like that. But make sure you check it because they are not particularly close together. It's a quick bus ride, but it's a 20 minute walk. So if you show up at one and your train or whatever leaves from the other one, you're a little bit far away. Interlaken West, the West Station, is where the boats go to Lake Thun and Ost, the East Station, is where they go to Lake Brands. So there are some notable differences likely you'll be leaving out of Interlock and Ost, but there are some things that leave out of the other station. So if you confuse them, 
you might just miss your transportation. Yeah, so just, I think, the, for, for all the passes that you'll have to, for the mountains, everything leaves from Interlaken Ost, so the east part that goes to Kindelwald, Lauterbrunnen. So this is the main one, but if you take a boat to Lake Thun, this is on the Interlaken West. So the fifth tourist mistake to avoid is similar also <laughs> in the region, and this is for Grindelwald. I have done this personally myself, and that is confusing the Grindelwald station, the train station with Grindelwald Terminal. So this one's a little bit trickier than Interlaken because there are definitely things that leave out of both of these. They're both yes. really important. All of the trains and things like that will come into the Grindelwald station. So that is right in the middle of the village on the main strip. That's where all the hotels are, everything like that. I would say maybe about a five minute drive away, 15, 20 minute walk is mm -hmm. Grindelwald Terminal. Grindelwald Terminal are where the gondolas go up to the Mendlichen, where the Eiger Express will take you up to the Jungfrau Yacht. So you'll likely be using both of these, mm -hmm. Louis did a morning hike at the Mendlichen and asked me to pick him up at Grindelwald Terminal and I showed up at the train station and I said, where are you? <laughs> I was waiting for <laughs> so, quite a while. Uh, when we say at the beginning of the video that these are mistakes that we've made, we've really made them ourselves. So this one, we have made them ourselves. So this one is important because there are definitely things that leave out of both of them. So if you have a particular time in your itinerary, make sure you're going to the right station here. Just to note that the train that comes from Interlaken that goes to Grindelwald, Main station, Grindelwald main station is the last station, but the train will also stop every time in Grindelwald terminal. So if you want to take your gondola to the main station or to the Aigo Express from Interlaken, the train will stop there and then you'll be in that terminal. So this is the train will stop on in both stations. So our six top mistakes that you could make and that you should avoid when planning a trip to Interlaken is actually thinking that Interlaken is worth spending a full day. And this is not the case. Interlaken is an excellent base for everything in the region. But in terms of actual village, city, it's actually an, a little bit underwhelming in my opinion. I much prefer going to Thun and Brienz that are much kind of more cute uh, as, uh, as cities. You can, I think, spend some, some time when you are back from your activities in Interlaken, but really planning on visiting Interlaken is not worth your time. You'd better off just go to the nature or to other cities than really spending some time in Interlaken. So mistake number seven to avoid is a little bit unfortunate and a bummer that it's yeah. been happening more recently, but that is not keeping your wits about you, especially in train stations. Switzerland is heralded as being very, very safe to travel to, and that is true. But I think a good rule of thumb when you're traveling is don't spend more time in train stations than you need to, and when you are there, just make sure you're a little bit more aware of your surroundings than you are day-to-day -day normally. Unfortunately, I've been getting a lot of reports of people in interlocking getting pickpocketed, and a lot of you have been messaging me or leaving comments, and it's really sad to hear it. So. The tourist scam that I've been seeing the most people report happening is a group of people in the train stations will offer to help you with your luggage and then something will go missing, a bag or something like that. So if that happens, just say no thank you and, and, and do it yourself because it is a common scam that's happening. Most people are good natured, but there are people that look to take advantage of tourists in any situation. That being said. Don't enter Switzerland or Interlaken thinking it's really unsafe. Yeah. We have left things in the Jungfrau that have gotten returned to us. Switzerland overall also, yeah. is <laughs> <My> really, <camera. laughs> really safe. But if you are a group of tourists, there are always people looking to exploit that. So really simple, just be aware of your surroundings and you're gonna be totally fine. The eighth mistake not to make when you are planning your trip to Interlaken and the Interlaken region, especially when you are planning on going skiing or doing some luge in the region in the winter is to have Interlaken as a base because you will have to always take a train to the um, ski resorts to then have to take a gondola to do all these activities. This is a little bit annoying and also the, the views from the villages of Grindelwald, Wengen, Muren or even Lauterbrunnen is really nice when it's snowy and it's much more convenient. So if you are going there with the purpose of going skiing or, or really doing these activities on a daily basis, have your hotel accommodation in Grindelwald, Lauterbrunnen, Muren or Wengen. So the ninth mistake to avoid, and if you've watched a few of our videos, you've maybe seen this theme come up a lot, and that is eating out for all of your meals, including lunch. 
Interlochen is a great region to picnic in because so many of those activities that you're going to be doing are in the mountains. But once you're up in the mountains, you can't really get picnic stuff. So you need to plan for that when you're in Interlochen or on any of those oh, valley right cities. In, yeah. Exactly. So go to a Migra or a Cup, those are the supermarkets or any of those kind of local shops and pick up what you need and bring it up into the mountain with you because once you are up in the mountains, there will be restaurants, but there will no longer be those stores to offer you that option to picnic. So plan for it before you go on your hikes or whatever you're doing and then you could save yourself quite a bit of money eating in those often overpriced restaurants up in the mountains. And last but not least is planning on having all the gondolas, mountain trains, and these activities open all year long, which is not the case, nope. unfortunately. So, for example, the Hardekulm Funicula is only open from April to, I think, October. So if you are coming early or later, this is not something that is open. And it's a little bit uh, sad, but this is still something to uh, to make sure that you go to these websites and know exactly when the closures are. The Menlichen also closes on shoulder month. The Trümmelbach Fälle, this, this is more of an activity, closes after November, I think, and reopens only in the spring or early summer. You have a lot of these things that will close because there's less tourists or because of the, the snow and the, the conditions that don't allow it to make it appropriate in terms of safety. So make sure you check all your activities on websites to make sure that this is open when you come. Otherwise, you'll still have a lot of things that can be done. I think the top of Europe is always uh, open all, all year long, but always check the schedules and you will be fine. Okay, guys. So if you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. If you find this content helpful, you can consider supporting us by buying us a virtual coffee at that link thank you. here. Let us know if you like these tourist mistake types of videos. I made one, I think almost a year and a half at this point and this is the second one so if there are other places and we can make this a series that you'd like to see tourist mistakes let us know what you'd like to see in the comments and we'll look into making those but as always thank you guys so much for your support we really appreciate it we love making videos for you guys but we'll see you in the next one bye guys bye hey guys thanks for watching thanks for watching if you want to see more videos like this please make sure to like and subscribe we'll see you soon